so we know something about light we uh, saw the phenomena of diffraction interference but sometimes light can behave as a wave as we studied it can also behave as a particle in some cases interesting cases the photoelectric effect which we will study right now now since light is a is considered to be a particle in this uh, this particle is called a photon and the theory in which light is described as a photon is the photon theory or the quantum theory of light now this particle called photon has an energy associated with it now i'm giving you the exact uh, the formula straight away so the energy associated with the photon and since it is also a wave and a particle and this phenomenon of uh, having the wave nature and a particle nature at the same time is known as wave particle duality so particles can have a wavelength <laughs> interesting right this is uh, some count but counter intuitive now since light has a wave it has it has a wavelength it has uh, frequency it has all sorts of characteristics associated with it and this photon also has a wavelength also has a frequency now the energy associated with one photon is given by e the energy as h planck constant times nu the frequency of the photon and the value of h this is known as the planck constant it's a somewhat 3 6 into 6.63 into 10 to the power minus 34, really small number, joule seconds. A uh, useful way to put it is 4.14 into 10 to the power minus 15, 15 electron volt, another unit of energy, seconds. And nu this is known as nu e is equal to h nu and nu is nothing but the frequency so you can check this uh, dimensionally so you have energy here you have joule second and you have second inverse right second to the power minus 1 and then second second will cancel out we are left with joules energy now this is the energy associated with one photon so if you have n number of photons say you have 10 photons then you multiply this entire thing by 10 so you get the energy of 10 photons you have need the energy of 100 photons you multiply this with 100 million photons you multiply this with a million now notice energy is increasing in fixed amounts there is no such thing as 1.5 photons or you know no 7.5 no nothing like that it's increasing is an integral multiple right integers integer 1 2 3 4 all these integer multiple of h nu now this is known as quantization of energy so energy increasing by fixed amounts quantization of energy another important uh, fact associated with it is the momentum and the momentum p is given as the energy all right divided by c the c is the speed of light what is the value of speed of c speed of light it's somewhat 3 into 10 to the power 8 into the power 8 meters per second it's a very useful thing another way to write it is e is equal to substitute this value so h nu by c okay and we know an equation that the frequency times the wavelength is the speed of a wave this is true for any wave all right which gives nu by c as 1 by lambda is enough so we can say that this is h by lambda well lambda is the wavelength of our photon Now notice the energy 
and the mom- the energy and the momentum both are independent of the intensity of light the only the only thing that matters is the frequency now this is useful you will see why it is so now that we know all this an ex- uh, we come to an experiment which was a very famous experiment it revealed the photon nature of light now what happened is light was incident on metal surfaces and electrons seemed to flow so there was a current and the uh, amount of current the amount, number of electrons which were emitted was independent of the intensity of a light a light source so it doesn't matter how much intense your um, light is if it's below a certain frequency no electrons will get emitted nothing will happen but if it's above a particular frequency for a particular metal then we see current this photo current now let us see what is going also happening we have this metal surface okay this is a metal a property of metals uh, the metallic bond is that it has a lot of free electrons so lots and lots of free electrons on the surface and this nature having lot lots of free electrons is responsible for many properties of metal which you have studied it's responsible for lustrousness is uh, the luster it provides the um, ductility malleability right so now this is a metal so lot of free electrons and a photon is incident on this so a photon it's how i to draw a photon so it has some energy associated with it and an electron gets emitted so this electron which gets emitted is known as the photo electron so this electron will have some energy so it has some kinetic energy to be more precise this will be kinetic this will be k let us call this as k now an important thing is that in order for this electron to escape in one sense escape the surface of this metal it requires a particular amount of energy so if the energy of this electron is lesser than this the the, the particular energy required to kick this out from the surface of this metal is known as the work function of a particular metal work function and it's denoted by the letter phi right so you have, so you uh, give this electron some energy some energy which is equal to phi which is equal to the work function this is uh, lost lo- lost in le- uh, getting out of the surface and then the entire energy is the kinetic energy now can we use uh, the conservation of energy and see what are the relations between this this and this let us see so you have this electron okay e minus okay. now let us look at the energy transitions okay energy uh, supplied or energy given by the electron so you give some energy e to the electron fine energy is lost as the work function so the energy required to get out of the surface and the final energy which is left is the kinetic energy now using the conservation of energy we can say that the kinetic energy the final kinetic energy is the difference of these two clearly right we can write this e minus phi this is this has some this is kind of a little bit improper why because see we haven't considered the fact that electrons electron will collide with another other electrons in this we have assumed that the electron will straight away will be kicked out by this photon but that's that's not the general case generally electrons will collide with other electrons so it will might go something like this something like this and then 
move out of this metal and energy will be lost in these collisions so this energy is essentially the maximum kinetic energy possible so modifying this a bit we get the maximum kinetic energy so k max maximum k sub max is equal to the energy of this photon minus our work function minus phi this is our final equation which we get and this equation is known as Einstein's photoelectric effect equation because it was Einstein who explained this photoelectric effect in 1905 and he won the Nobel for this in 1921 so 16 years later he won the Nobel for this explanation of photoelectric effect now earlier I spoke about a very interesting phenomenon which happened that this was this entire uh, photo current was independent of the intensity of these photons which were emitted it depends only on this frequency or we can say on the wavelength can we show this using what we know think about it yes we can let us do a little derivation in it fine Now, the energy associated, associated with the photon is h nu, you know that. Now, let us put h nu in the Einstein's, in our Einstein's equation. So, we get k max plus h nu minus phi. Okay. Now, if this is zero, zero in uh, the kinetic energy, the, all the energy which is applied to the electron will be lost to, in escaping this metal. So in this case, we, uh, in this case, the electron will just be removed, just be removed from this metal. So that's why we let us take this to be zero. Okay, so all the energy is lost in escaping from this. We get nu as phi by h. Easy. Phi goes there, h goes there. Phi by h. Now this fre frequency is a very special frequency. So let us call this is known uh, represented as v naught nu naught sorry as phi by h. Okay. So what does this tell? So if your frequency of the photon is greater than this particular v naught nu naught then only then photo electrons will get emitted if it's lesser than that then you won't see any photoelectric effect clearly it's independent of the intensity of the light so it only depends on nu naught and this frequency is known as threshold frequency v naught is the threshold frequency so for convenience let us write our final kinetic maximum kinetic energy in terms of nu naught so from this you get phi is equal to nu naught h it's easy so we write our this called k max okay is h so if you write phi uh, uh, h no not there and you can factor out the h okay so h no the frequency minus no not this is our Einstein's equation in terms of our threshold frequency now of course we can uh, use add another thing called the threshold wavelength because we know that frequency 
okay, that uh, any frequency in general is like this speed of the wave time divided by its wavelength. So you can use this and you can say, okay, this is equal to hc, the c will factor out, 1 upon lambda minus 1 upon lambda naught. Fine, this will, al this will also work. Okay, max will be this. Now of course this is also, this is known as our threshold wavelength. This is our Einstein's equation in terms of our threshold frequency nu naught and the threshold wavelength. So, thanks for watching this video and I hope you find this really really interesting. Bye for now.